At the end of Masechet Eruvin, the last mission of Masechet Eruvin ends on a strange note. The topics that are coming up at the end, the topics that come up at the end of the Masechet are not really connected, well, barely connected to the topic of the Masechet itself. We're dealing towards the end about different things that um, that we're allowed, we're allowed to do in the Besamikdosh and we're not allowed to do outside of it. And the topic of Masechet is what? It's Eruven, yeah? Mm -hmm. We're talking about Eruv. Mostly we're talking about Eruv uh, We're also talking a little bit about Eruv Echumim, how far one is allowed to walk outside the city um, on Shabbos and Yom Tov. But Besamikdosh, you know, this is not really the topic of Masechet Eruven. And then at the very end, after we're discussing a fascinating topic, by the way, who remembers, who remembers, a few years ago there was a terror attack. There, was a, there were riots, there was shooting on Harabais. Mm -hmm. On Harabais. And there was a terrorist who died. Really? And they had to clear him out. And Zaka was called upon to do that. And they sent Kehanim to take out the body. Does anybody remember that? No. no. Okay. It's based on this Gemara where the Gemara says here that uh, when we need to do any anything in the Besamikdash in terms of you know uh, fixing up the Kodesh Kadoshim, fixing up the Echal, you need to do work. If you can have a Kohen, it's better. There is a whole uh, hierarchy if you have a kosher Kohen, who is also Tohar, and he's not a Balmum, that's ideal, and if you can't, then you're going to the next level, but it has nothing to do with Masech And suddenly, you have these mysterious two lines, Rabbi Shimon Omer, Rabbi Shimon says, Mokem sheitil al chachomem, mishel chon asunah. There's, when Chachomim allowed you to do something, they allowed you to do it because it's yours. It's a connection. This is neither a connection to Mr. Mikdash, mm -hmm. nor a connection to Elohim. It comes out of, as the Americans say, it comes out of left fields. And then, Why was it allowed, whatever they allowed? Because it's only a Shvus. Shvus is a general category of the rabbinic prohibitions on Shabbos. So we have an idea that at least we're dealing with Shabbos, right? so we're in, the, in the greater world of Masech HaSeinobin. As the Gemara uh, tries to figure out, what are we talking about? And the Gemara says, you know what? These are two ideas. They connect to Mishnayis. One on Elubin has 104 Dapim, the last Daf, the 104th Daf is Daf Kuf Hei, which is not, not, not Daf Aleph. And this goes back to Daf Nun Beis. A half a Masech ago, there was a statement made, and this is building off that. And then another statement was made on the Kuf base before we saw, as we introduced the issues of, for example, repairing in the Besamikdash, repairing a, what, what, what did Levim do in Besamikdash? They played music. One of the things they did. And, and so they played music. So what do you do if you're in the middle of playing, you know, the, 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 the lyre, the harp, and bing, there's a, one of the, the strings mm -hmm. that breaks. So there's a whole discussion in the Gemara, different, different in the Mishnah. There are different views among the Tanoim what you're allowed to do. And Rav Shimon says you're allowed to repair it, but only with a bow, not with a knot. And so, 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 so the, the, the Gemara says, what does it mean? What's allowed was anywhere only loud and says the, the, the Gemara. What is he talking about? Hatam Kai there, a few tap in the back. The Kamal Tanekame, the first opinion, the, mini, the opinion that was mentioned in the Mishnah was Koshra, one is allowed even to tie together the strings that broke. And yet now, at the end of Masech, three up further, Rabbi Shimon N says, Onva. Only a bow, not a knot. Aniva lo When he's going to just temporarily fix it by making a bow which is so easily undone, there would not be any potential chiyuv chatas. 
You wouldn't have to, you wouldn't be really transgressing Shabbos You're on a biblical level. You wouldn't have to bring, if you do that unintentionally in a different context, you would not have to bring a carbon to atone for your sin. So that, Shavuli Rabbanan, Chachamim allowed it in the context of, uh, of, of the music instruments of the English. If it, you're making a knot, if you're making a knot on Shabbos without thinking about it, you were unintentionally transgressing Shabbos, you would have to bring a common chattas. So because of that, if Chachum uh, didn't allow to do that, to fix the music instruments in terms of English. Beautiful, but what, you know, how do we land in this topic? So, Balea Tosfot point out, that there was simply an interruption in the flow. We are dealing with this, but in between we were dealing with, it, we, 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 we went into a side issue, dealing with things connected to the Besamekdash, and we returned to the topic. The Ma'am Show finds this utterly unconvincing. It's just too much. You can mention an idea and immediately jump back to it, but to go and, and one statement goes back three daf, and another statement goes back 53 daf. And you're going to tell me that it just landed here because we have to come back to the topic. It doesn't make any sense. So the Marshu says, the reason why Rav Shima and Rav Tadai Nevizeh, Elayi Tadai Nevizeh, Elayi Tadai Nevizeh, the reason why Rav Shima is quoted at the end of the Maseches is not because Rav Shima yeah, was interrupted. It's because he's making a general statement about the entire Masechus Negulim. He's making an entire, there are, uh, there's a, a story that was told to me by Rabbi Yitzhak that when his father-in-law, Rabbi Chaim when he was alive, was Rashim of Mir, um, he once went, I mean, I, I myself spent a few months learning Masechus Negulim, so I obviously don't follow entirely what, what we'll hear in the following story, but nonetheless, he was walking through Yeshiva, and he saw a couple of guys who were walking, uh, sitting and learning Masechus Shabbos, so he told them, why are you learning Masechus Shabbos? Masechus Shabbos is 90% the Rabbonon. Only 10% of the Raisa. You should learn the Zikin, and the Zikin, when you're dealing with interpersonal issues, everything is of the Raisa. There's no, no concept of Chumrah when, when you have to decide who is right between two parties. When you're being Machmer, that means I'm, I'm taking away from the other guy. Doesn't work. So in the Zikin, everything is other guy. So there was a, a statement he made in order to try to draw them to the classic Yeshiva Shemasechtas. But this is what the Masho says here. Masho says, Rav Shimon is making a statement. Eilovin, often we find in Eilovin something is prohibited and suddenly it's allowed. You're not allowed to carry, but if you make an Eilov, you're allowed to carry. What is making an Eilov? So we're going to get to through two steps. First of all, there are many kudos. Or you're not allowed to carry, but you find yourself in this and this situation. Suddenly, for a dwell mitzvah, you can do a trick in order to create an Eruv. There's one situation, for example, you weren't allowed to take something out because they forgot to make an Eruv. They needed a separator of a minion. So they were allowed to make makeshift mechitzas in an odd way. They would put up, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, 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 some draping fabrics. In, in order to exclude one chotzer, so you could go from a house to another chotzer where they were assembled for laning, and in a, in a way it was just allowed. And you ask yourself, Chazal allow you something based on what? And the answer is, all of the things that are being permitted here and there in, in Elohim are always because heim amru beheim amru. Chazal came and pro made the, the prohibition most of, the, of what we encounter in Egovin is not the Elisas, but it can be the Elisas. There are cases where you have a real Kushus of Rabbi, um, but most of the things we encounter in Egovin, and so they could also show the way where things are allowed. And here we come to a poor topic. And what does Rav Shimon then say? He says, whatever they gave you was yours. It, it's a, be, be meaning Chazal created a margin. Why did Chazal create all these zeros? Because they allow us a margin of error that would not exist if we were dealing directly with the license. And in that margin of error, they can create the permissible. And how do we create the permissible most of the time for Eilovin? What is an Eilov? An Eilov is not the thread all around or the wall. An Eilov is the bread, the common bread or the matzahs that we, we join into a common meal. And, and there's stories a little more about that. How through making an Eilov, people come together, just like Mishlach 
the idea that we come together because we share a meal, because we share food, because we share experiences, because we seek to create a common home. All these ideas of Eruven are nothing but bringing people together. Have a look at, since there is an Eruven in Vienna, how much people want to live in the Eruven. It brings us all together. That's what Rav Shimon closes on the second with. If you want to take away one thing from, you take away a lot of things from the second one thing in particular, <laughs> the thing in particular to take, a, uh, take away is Hilchis Eruven is there to bring us all together as a Kehillah, and, 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 and to give us a, it gives us a margin of error. It gives us a way to deal you know, where we need some leniency, and it does so by pulling us all together.